In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a function calling LLM on your local device as well as on an iPhone 15. So let's just get into it. We're going to go and run python infer.py. You'll be able to find this in the GitHub repo below. And I'm going to show you guys how this works real quick. We're just going to get the price of Amazon. It's going to run a function call. And then we're going to get a response back. Current price of Amazon. And let's check that. And that's correct. So I'm going to show you guys how to set all this up here in a second. But I just want to show you guys first how it worked and how it can actually run a function call locally on your computer. So we're using LM Studio. We have the server set up and I'll show you guys how to set this up. But you can see we send in the messages right here and what's the price of Amazon. And then we get out a function call and we parse this with the Python code. And it gives us the symbol right there. You can see it. And then we come back in and run the function call and we say function response. We pass that message in and we make another call to the LLM and it gives us the latest price. So pretty easy. And I'm gonna show you guys how we fine tune this and how we built this model up. So if you visit the docs website below, you can see everything. You can read over all the information about the model. Um, it's not production ready, uh, it still has a lot of work to do. Um, but the things that it is good at is it's actually pretty fast when you run it on a phone. So running it on an iPhone 15 Pro, it was able to get nine tokens per second. If you want to build out agent based applications and function calls are a big part of that, um, you could have a local LLM running on the phone. Um, and that's kind of one thing that we're focusing on in China is being able to build an on device LLM that can run and actually call functions. So that way you don't have to rely on a cloud provider. On the computer, we were able to get 24 tokens per second. This is gonna vary based on how many functions that you load the system prompt with, but the context it can take is up to 32,000 tokens. Um, there are limitations in it right now. The accuracy um, on mobile uh, is not very good. It'll format the JSON wrong sometimes, um, or it'll misspell words, um, which we're gonna work on that. And then also with the instruct model, it does it's not fine-tuned in the message to spit out the actual message that it should be. It's only fine-tuned on the actual function call itself. So in future updates, we'll be updating that and having it put it in the right JSON format all the time, as well as being able to have the correct message in there. And you guys will see this in later on in the video when I show you guys what I'm talking about. You can see all the downloads in here. We have the quantized models as well as the LoRa, and then the fine-tuning notebook and the data sets that we used as well. Um, these are very just basic right now. We are working on a way more in-depth data set uh, that has multi-turn conversations, uh, multi-turn like function calls as well. Um, and just being able to have it have better reasoning and better planning um, in the model itself. Um, and then it explains on how to run the model, which this is what we're gonna jump into. So once you clone the repo, uh, we're gonna be in here. And here we have LM Studio. And these are the presets that you can load in um, that have everything for you so that we can run the model properly. Um, and then we also have the prompts in here for the chat model and the instruct model. And then over here is the React Native example. So that way you can run it on your mobile device. And then over here we have the infer.py, which is this file. This allows us to talk to the server on LM Studio. So that way we can have the LLM create the function calls for us and get a response. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into LM Studio and I'm gonna show you guys how to download the model. Okay, so you're going to go into LM Studio and you're just gonna type in Allison and we're gonna see these pop up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be downloading the Funk Master V01, uh, Mistral 7B. And then you can download whichever one of these you want based on how much RAM you have. But we're gonna be using the Q4 for this one. So after you've downloaded the model, you're just gonna go over, you can go into chat if you wanna chat with it or you can start the server up, which is what I did. So all you do is you just click start server, it starts up. Over here, you need to load in the preset. So you can open your presets folder or you can import from a file and then you'll have them in here. And you just gotta find it and click the Funk Master Chat. And this is gonna load in everything in the right format for us. Um, you can change the context length right here. It, has, it can go up to 32,000 tokens. So let's go back into the Python code. I'm gonna show you guys how this works. Okay, so I'm just gonna break this down by functions. So in this one, we have the parse function call. So we're gonna be looking for this at the start of the text, which indicates that it's gonna be a function call. 
And then after that, we're gonna be getting the JSON format of it. So then over here, we have the get stock price, which is the function that we're running right now. So whatever function that you guys wanna add in, you need to have these functions that it can call later on. So that way you can actually get the price back or get whatever information you wanna pass on to the model. Then over here, we have the execute function. And if the function called name is get stock price, then we're gonna be running that. And we're gonna pass in the arguments to it. And as you can see, we have the arguments, the symbol, and then get stock price. And then return stock price like that. So then we go down here, we have our initial messages. What's the price of Amazon? Over here, we have our functions, which are in here. And you need to set the functions in this format as well. So we're gonna keep the temperature at 0.3 right now. And what we're gonna do is, so we have the message, send message, it sends the initial message to start the conversation. And then over here, we append what the assistant gives us back, which is the function call. And then we parse the function call. And then over here, we're gonna execute the function call. And then we, we add this line in right here, which is the function response. And we add this in as the user role. So then we are adding another message back in. So underneath this one is gonna be the function call. Underneath that is gonna be the function response. And then we're gonna ask the model one more time, uh, what, like, what was the response, like what happened? So then that way it'll say the latest price of Amazon is whatever it is right now. And then it'll print that out for us. So like in the beginning, we'll run this again and we'll see what happens. And then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna watch the logs as it happens. So you can see we get what's the price of Amazon. And we can see we get the function call comes out and you can see how fast it is. So it adds the function call in, get the function response and then follows up with the current price of Amazon is this, which is accurate right now. So I also have all the fine tuning notebooks below. It's pretty simple. You just have to run every single one of these cells and it'll fine tune the model. Um, the chat one is based on the chat ML format. We use unsloth for the fine tuning, um, which helps speed things up a lot. Um, and then also down here, it can quantize the models for us as well. So we can get all that done and get it in whatever format we want. So you guys can play around with this, uh, fine tune the models yourself or whatever you guys want. Um, it'll work. Um, you just need to make sure your data set uh, is in the right format. So it needs to be in that chat ML format. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys the data set that we use for this as well. And we're working on a new data set that has more multi-turn conversations um, and like multi-hop questions um, when doing the function calling, as well as planning and reasoning to help it out even more. Okay, so over here, you can see the conversations. So from the system, you have these functions and then the function call. So it's trained to output this right here. So, and then it calls the function from there. And then over here, it's, it has the from tool, but when we were fine tuning it, we didn't have this added in. So we just send it in from user um, and then it'll actually create the same response that it would have had if you would have had tool in there. But it, it does work. Um, you're gonna have to play around with it um, to make sure, because sometimes it doesn't output uh, the function call every single time with accuracy. Okay, so now we're gonna be going on to the React Native app and we're gonna be able to run the LLM on our phone. We don't have uh, like the parsing set up for the function call inside the application. You guys can add that in yourselves if you guys want that. Um, but it, right now it just runs the LLM and then you'll see the message and the function call come out. The chat model isn't performing as well on mobile as the instruct model is. The instruct model will put out the JSON format and call the function properly. It's just the message that's in the JSON, which you guys will see, it's not correct, which we're gonna be fine tuning that in the future as well. So let's get into this. So the first thing that you guys are gonna do is you're gonna run npm install, and then after that, you're gonna run npx pod install. So npmi, and then you'll run npx pod install. And I already have all these installed in here right now, so it'll work for me. But after this is done, you're gonna to have to open up Xcode, and then you're gonna go into the signing and capabilities, and you just need to sign the application um, with your account. So that, and then that way, it'll actually load the app up onto your device. And I'll show you guys that real quick. So first thing you need to do is you're gonna to have to go find your folder 
and then in that folder open up the ILS and from there you're going to see the R and example Xcode project and you're just going to open that up. So now that we are in Xcode, very simple, you're going to go over here, you're going to click R and example, you're going to see signing capabilities pop up, you're going to go over here, you're going to select your team. And then over here, if you need to change the name, just add in your name at the front of this and you're good to go. And after that, it'll automatically save and then you can exit out and we'll go back over to Xcode and run the application. So what you can do is have your phone plugged into the computer and you can run Yarn iOS and it'll build the application onto your phone. Or I mean, I mean NPM iOS and it'll build the application onto your phone. And after it's built, you can also later on just run npm start. It'll start the server up and you can access it on your phone. You can just press I as well and it'll build it as well if you want to do that. So we're going to jump into the phone now and I'm going to show you guys how the LLM runs on the phone. Okay, so you're going to need to go to the Hugging Face repo and then you're going to download uh, the Q4, which is the 4 gigabyte one. Um, the Q2 does not run well on the phone. And this is the instruct model as well. So once the app loads up, you're just going to tap the file icon and then you're going to open the model. And then it'll start initializing. And once it's initialized, you can start talking to the model. So we're going to ask it what's the price of Amazon. And then we're going to get the response back. It's going to be in JSON format with the message. The message is not fine tuned, so that's incorrect but the function call will be correct. And it's good will be in the format that we want it to be in as well. The only issue is those single comments um, that are next to the parameters. So this is the React Native code. Um, I took the Llama React Native uh, application, their example, and just went off of that and used it. So you can see the initial chat prompt. This is for the chat version. I'm going to show you guys what we set up for the instruct as well. So you can add the system message, handle release context, and then over here. So these are all the calls you can do. You can bench it, release it. You can stop or reset the conversation. With instruct, you want to reset the conversation after like every message um, because then it just keeps all the tokens in context and or it keeps all the messages in context. And you don't really want that um, because then it'll start giving out responses that aren't as good. Um, and then as we go down, you can see how this format, this is formatted for chat, the way we set it up. And then over here we have all of like the temperature and all of our variable set. And then you can, you guys can add, you guys can add more to these or change these around. Um, you guys can go into the Llama React Native package. It's built off the Llama CPP server. So if you guys just look at all the variables you guys can use for that. Um, they should work in here as well. And as we go down, you can see like the number of tokens per second and all that stuff and it adds the messages and it streams the message back with this right here. And then down here we have the chat and if instruct is true, then we'll use the instruct and it's the same thing. It's just, it has the format differently uh, for the instruct model. So, and then you can see stock price is the name of it. The other one was get stock price. So it actually does call it correctly with the parameters and with the symbol correctly as well. So, but the formatting is uh, wrong though. Like there was uh, two single quotes in there, which shouldn't have been in there. So like when you're trying to parse the JSON, that'll have an issue and you'll get thrown an error with that. Um, I also tried to like add in some of the function calling stuff in here, but you guys can play around with that um, and add more to that if you guys want. And because I had to do rejects to try to extract the function call because it's not accurate every single time, but we're going to be working on that to make it more accurate in the future. Same thing down here. It's all the exact same. It's just the way that we format the messages when we send it in like this instruction. And then we add these to the stop tokens. So if you guys are interested in what we're building, we're building agent first tools and agent first models. Um, we plan on having a lot of open source things uh, to help people out as well as our own proprietary tools as well. Um, but if you guys are interested in 
um, using Allison. We're going to be going into beta here in a couple of weeks. Um, we're just waiting on a few more approvals. Um, so you guys can join the waitlist. And if you guys are very interested in joining the beta, um, just shoot us an email at info at allison.ai and we'll move you to the top of the list. Um, it's not another boring chatbot. When you talk to Allison, you're able to get actionable UI components. So that way you guys can take action in your business right then and there when you're asking. It's not like you're telling it to draft you an email, then you have to copy the email and go into Gmail and paste it in there. It's already connected to your Gmail account. So if you said draft an email to this person, it'll draft an email in your same style and then it'll allow you to send it directly off of our platform. Same thing with like getting your emails and checking your emails. You'll get presented with a summary and you can let the agents run in the background to manage your inbox. So then next time you log in, you just get hit with a summary of everything that you need to check on. All the drafts that are wrote, all the emails that are categorized for you. Um, we're gonna be having a bunch of different data sources integrated into it. So that way it can seamlessly work throughout your business for you and handle a lot of those back office tasks and automate them. And everything's easily managed in your command center where you guys have all the analytics and everything. So I am the CTO of this company. If you guys are interested in this, um, please join the waitlist. Um, we're building this for you guys. Any features that you guys would like to see in the future, uh, please let us know and give us any feedback as that, that would be much appreciated. If you guys enjoyed this video, just please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you guys for watching.